Alright, what's going on guys? The Saiyan17 here and today I'm going to be talking about my first impressions and my hands-on experience with Dragon Ball Xenoverse, the network test. As you guys probably know, Japan had their first network test a while back and now we finally got the chance to try out the game here in North America. Now before I start talking about the game, I do want to say something. People are going to think I'm just bullshitting or talking out of my ass, so I do want to say that I didn't just play one match and make this video. I've played I played the game for about 8 hours straight, trying different char characters, getting used to the controls, and basically getting that feel of the game. Now I know that the DBZ video game community is divided up into two sections. You have the Budokai fans and the Tenkaichi fans. We all know this game is developed by Dimps, the creators of Budokai, Shin Budokai, Burst Limit, and Infinite World. Now hear me out here. We're gonna look at this game from two different point of views. The Budokai games were created to be pure fighting games, just like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. That's why the Budokai games still to this day have the most depth in the fighting mechanics, and you guys know I love that. Now the second point of view would be the fully 3D fighting games like Budokai Tenkaichi and Raging Blast. These games had good fighting mechanics. Were they on the same level as Budokai? No, because they weren't trying to be pure fighting games. With the Tenkaichi games, they were aiming to give the players a little more freedom, so they could fly around the map, dodge these huge energy beams, and pick from over 150 different characters, which most of them were clones of one another, but overall the main objective was to give the players that Dragon Ball feel of the anime. The best way to describe these games is that they were a Dragon Ball simulator. Now that I've explained both of those styles of games, you're probably wondering in which category does Xenoverse fall in. Is it trying to be more like Budokai or more like Budokai Tenkaichi? Now this might disappoint people, but when I played this network test, I didn't get the Budokai feeling at all, even though this is a dimps game. I also didn't get the Tenkaichi feeling at all either. I know it's a fully 3D game, but to be honest, once you actually play it, it plays very differently from both of those games. So I'm not going to judge Xenoverse from the Budokai point of view or the Tenkaichi point of view, because to me Xenoverse clearly isn't trying to be like any of those games. If you guys don't believe me, you can hear it yourself from the game's producer. And we are here talking about Dragon Ball Xenoverse. We have Hirano-san, the game producer, and we have Brandon here who's going to translate for us. So our first question is, we, we just announced the game today. What makes Dragon Ball Xenoverse different or special for you guys? So, um, for this Dragon Ball game, the main concept is to create a brand new kind of Dragon Ball Z game experience. Uh, previous Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z games were about enjoying the character. Like, you would choose a character that you want to play as and enjoy playing as that character. So this time, the concept is to create a Dragon Ball Z world, a Dragon Ball Z universe, and have that be um, the method through which you enjoy the game. The producer of the game and Dimps are aiming to make a brand new Dragon Ball experience, so therefore, if you compare this game to Budokai, you will be disappointed. Why? Because it's not trying to be Budokai. If you compare it to Tenkaichi, you'll be disappointed. Why? Because it's not trying to be Tenkaichi. Now, please, I don't need idiots in the comments section reminding me that this game is not finished yet. I'm not stupid, I know that the network test doesn't represent the final product. Another thing I want to say is that the network test actually wasn't even the most recent build of the game. By the way, if you want to see a more recent build of this game, then try finding gameplay from the recent uh, gaming conventions this game was at. Because the build of the game they have uh, showing, on, uh, showing off in those videos are from the PS4 version, which is much more recent than this network test. Another thing is that people need to stop using that same old excuse, it's an alpha, it's an alpha. Yes, the network test was in alpha, but like I said, the newer gameplay videos from the conventions that are being released, that version of the game is not in alpha. That build is much more closer to the final version of the game. You have to remember that Dragon Ball Xenoverse has been in development for over 2.5 years, which is a long time for a Dragon Ball game. The game is supposed to come out in early 2015, which is literally a couple months away, so it Dimps actually should be nearing the final stages of development. So again, if you think that all the new footage is still in alpha, you're absolutely wrong. There is no way a game so far in development can still be in alpha. That doesn't make any sense. So basically what I'm saying is that if you don't like the gameplay in the newer footage, and you think it's magically just going to change in the final product, you're wrong. Of course bugs and glitches will be sorted out, but there won't be any drastic changes. What you're seeing is pretty much what you're going to get. Okay, now that I've got that out of the way, I can finally begin talking about my experience with the network test. First thing I want to mention is that Dimps has done a good job of getting rid of all that pointless button mashing that was in Battle of Z. 
If you don't believe me, you can go watch Zobi's 70s gameplay of Xenoverse. He was button mashing the entire time and the only thing that resulted in was him getting his butt whooped. The fighting system in this game is actually great for a fully 3D game and it's refreshing to see that because it's been a long time since we've got that. Second thing is the graphics. Absolutely amazing for a network test and this is the last gen version of the game. I know that Dimps is making Xenoverse on the next gen consoles first, so most likely the frame rate on the PS4 version will be higher depending on how Dimps optimizes the game, meaning that not only will it look better, but it will also play smoother. Third thing I want to talk about is that character customization. Now obviously in the network test the character customization was stripped down a lot but it was still pretty damn cool, so just imagine the full version. Now I'm not gonna lie, I barely spent time with my created character. As you all know I'm a Budokai fan so my main interest in the game is just to go in and fight. All this character customization and RPG elements are cool, but for me they are all secondary things that I'll be doing on the side from time to time. But by no means am I saying it's bad. It's a good addition to the game and the people that want to do it will enjoy it. Number 4 is the main hub, where you get to interact with different uh, players. That was cool as well. They have different stations for different game types, both offline and online. They also have different stores where you can buy items and equipment. For those of you who don't know, the final version of the game will have a larger main hub, so there's still more new stuff to be seen. For example, there's going to be a station where you can enter the world tournament. So for those of you that loved world tournament in previous Dimps games like Budokai 3, World Tournament is back, there's also going to be a station where you go once you've collected the 7 Dragon Balls to summon Shenron. So yeah, the main hub is pretty cool. The best example of it would be if you've played Destiny and you've been to the tower, the main hub is exactly like that. Number 5 from what I've seen is what's driving people crazy the most right now and that is the movement. The way the characters move in this game is making people think it's like Battle of Z and I'm not gonna lie, when I first played the network test that's exactly what I said. But then you start to notice that the collisions are messed up, the hitboxes for the characters are weird, the characters do feel floaty and stiff. For example, when I'm in the middle of a fight, trading punches with my opponent, some attacks don't even land, the attacks literally don't connect. And on top of all that, your character goes into these awkward positions, for example, he'll turn sideways or above them or below them, to the point where you're not even hitting or facing your opponent. And this can be extremely frustrating. It didn't feel solid at all. That's pretty much the one big issue I had, but I can guarantee you that it will not be in the final version. I know it may feel like Battle of Z right now and that's completely understandable, but like I said, this network test build of the game is like alpha level shit. They will fix those issues. Number 6 is the final thing I want to talk about, which is that yellow lock on target system. I know it's part of the game and you need it when you, ha when you have more than 2 players on the screen, but to be honest, it's still fucking annoying. I'm only going to be playing one on one, I didn't like playing with 6 players in Battle of Z, and I don't like it in this game either. It's not fun, it's just a clusterfuck and a mess. Also, another thing I want to mention is the camera. Sometimes in one-on-one -on -one fights, when you're fighting behind a rock or in the corner of the map, basically in tight spaces, the camera goes nuts, which is very frustrating, and this issue has been a part of every 3D Dragon Ball Z game. Now remember, you can have six players on screen at once. I played the six-player match on the stage called Pod Landing, and it was annoying. First of all, in my opinion, I absolutely hate this whole multiplayer shit. Like I said, it's a mess, but when you have a bad camera, it's even worse. On the stage, pod landing, you know how there's a giant crater. In the match I was playing, the fight eventually moved into the crater, and I'm not even joking. The camera actually went full retard. There's energy beams flying at you, people fighting above you, people fighting behind you, and you can't see all these things. You can barely focus on one thing properly, so they have to fix this shit. I absolutely hate anything that has to do with more than two players in a Dragon Ball Z game. I'm not saying I hate team battles. I love team battles in Tenkaichi, but in those games it's still one on one, not every fucking character on the screen at once, you know? So yeah, I definitely don't like how these new Dragon Ball Z games are pushing this whole multiplayer thing because it does affect one on one fights as well. But yeah, overall guys, I am on board with this game. I just gave you my thoughts on it and so far the good things definitely outweigh the bad things. Now I know that this game isn't for everyone, some people still don't like the style and the direction it's going in, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but yeah I know that Dimps will accomplish what they're setting out to accomplish with this title, which is not to make the best Budokai or the best Tenkaichi, but to make the best Xenoverse they possibly can. So how exactly do I define this game? Is it a pure fighting game? No, it's more of a Dragon Ball simulator with MMO slash RPG elements. And I think that when the game comes out and you go into it, not expecting Budokai or Tenkaichi, you can have fun with it. 
Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. I will see you guys later. Peace.